Live and drink, friends, and welcome back to more Caves of Cud. When we last left off, we got into Red Rock Caverns. We are two strata deep. We have our gunwing Tybar here, who's just taking a rest by a campfire. He's had something to eat. I think he's metabolizing something right now. I think we can check what we're metabolizing. Where? Is it attributes? Uh, I can't remember where to check what I'm metabolizing. That's kind of weird. Active effects. Um, attributes. Show effects. Here we go. Metabolizing. So we got 14% max HP because we ate some jerky. And I think we're just ready to keep diving deep here. We need to get to the bottom of what's eating the water vine. So we're just going to move on. I think there's another quest as well. Our guy at um, Jopa wants us to bring him a knickknack, which I think I found one. So we'll take that to him when we return. We got a historical site. We need to go to and find a, a historical relic snowflake. Okay. But we're not going there right now. We're just going to continue down into Red Rock. Zoom out here. And let's go. Going to generate the new area. And I see some water to the... Um, Northeast here. I'm gonna continue walking around. I see a snap jaw. I think this is a snap jaw camp. We can tell there's like a fence here. I think that's a fence. So is that a is that a partition? That is a brine stock gate. So that's going to be somewhere where they can walk through and they can see us through. I don't think I can shoot him. Yeah, because the line of fire is blocked here. So I'm gonna wait for him to open that gate. And now I can shoot him. I miss. I get the hit. 15 damage. Not bad at all. It's probably more where that came from. I am holding an axe in my left hand. Probably going to swap these around. Um, just for my own personal... Um, what you call it? Where's insert? Uh, 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 yeah. Okay. Swap my primary limb. And so, there we go. Body part cannot be set as your primary. Can I not set this as my primary limb? Oh, here we go. I have to be ho hovering over it. I understand, I understand. So we'll equip, and we'll equip the torch. It's now half burnt. Okay. Luckily nothing snuck up on us whilst we were having a crisis of um, handedness. Just a corpse, nothing special. Some baskets here. There's nothing in them though. So we're just gonna move on. How deep is this water? It's about 500 drams, so it's not too deep. It's about ankle waist height. Oh, we got a snap jaw hunter. This one's got a bow. I'm just gonna shoot it. It is dead. And it might be holding some arrows, actually. Yeah. We get wooden arrows. There's a bronze dagger here, a short bow. Do we want to take a bow and arrow? There's a desert Chris. Leather armor. I could take a bow. It's nice to have as a backup to my um, as a backup to my revolvers. How many arrows do I have? We have six wooden arrows. So I don't know. It's a it's a backup. Two hundred twenty four slugs. We got plenty. We're a little bit wet though. So much water here. This dragonfly isn't angry at me or anything. So we're just gonna move on. Bit of a shame we can't fly underground, it just makes me feel a little unsafe. We have a plant here. This is a jilted lover. Uh verdurous cheery mottled with thorns reach for the warmth of a body. They hug the air in desperation. So this thing will attack us on sight. It's at an angle where I don't think we can shoot it, so I'm just gonna go in with the axe and chop chop. Fantastic. That's a doggy! Hello doggy. He's friendly. Uh she's a snarling mess of mad hair. She's also a swarmer, but she's friendly. I wonder if we can. Let me check my reputation with dogs here. Um, do this. No, they're very friendly. They will let you pet them, usually. So I'm going to pet the dog. You pet the feral dog, it barks. How cute. Alright, moving on. We are green, for some reason. I think it's because we're covered in plant blood. It doesn't say we're covered in anything, though. Slight, slight. I got grabbed, but we're fine. I'm going to just rest up a little bit here. And another snap draw. Um, you are in the way, dragonfly. going to go in with my axe there. What have you got? Nothing special. Oh, I need to step back. I'm a little close to this guy here. I'll just shoot him point blank. Seems good. 
Those things are a little dangerous. I didn't hover over it, but that is a Snapdraw Warlord. It's going to buff its surrounding Snapdraws, which is a bit scary. Ooh, we got a Beaded Bracelet, which is a trade good. So Beaded items sell for a lot more money than regular items. So let's have a look here. Oh, Beaded Bracelets are just tra trade items. I think they have fixed value, so that's very good. And there's an Iron Battle Axe here as well. We've already got a Steel Battle Axe, so I'm not going to bother with dual wielding here. I'll go for a single-handed axe, just as a backup weapon to my pistols. Sounds like a plan. Come around the corner here, there's some more torches. More bones. This one's a different colour. Nothing special, though. Alright, I'm going to zoom out, I'm going to auto-explore. Save me some button pressing. I got a snap drop. We missed it completely. I'm going to just swing at it with my axe. Okay, we get first blood. There's a long sword here. Boar skin gloves. This is fantastic. We don't have any gloves, so I'm going to take these. And that's going to be a pair of armor. Fantastic. So you see we've got nothing on our war and hands slot. I'm just going to grab these gloves. And I'm going to put them on. And if you watch our armor value, it's going to go up to two. Fantastic. If you get three stats like that, you might as well take it. Take a sip of fresh water from my water skin. We have 46 grams of water. We're not low at all. That'll last us a fair while, actually. I'm going to go in and hit this jilted lover. Heal up. Explore. I got impaled on a young ivory. So these are annoying little things. So on where I just stood, there's a young ivory. This is a plant that will remain in the ground until we walk over it. And will stab us when we do. Usually does a lot of damage and starts us bleeding. But we're, luckily we're not bleeding, so we'll just rest. Just a bit of a nasty surprise is all. I can kill it. I don't get any XP, but it just makes sure I don't stand on it again. Because what's annoying about young ivories is that sometimes they, like here, they'll hide under um, other items. So there's a corpse on top of this one, so I couldn't see it. Very unfortunate stuff. If you ever die to a young ivory, my heart like feels for you because it is it's humiliating. Another chill of lover. Completely fine. I'm going to wade through some of this water. Oh, shoot, there's electricity here. Oh, no, it's this thing. This is a uh, glow moth. This thing is very dangerous. I need to shoot it. Okay, thank God. We survived the encounter with the glow moth. That thing was shooting phosphor and, like, neon beams at me. It was, like, flashing so brightly that it hurt. And it was dealing a lot of damage. So I actually could have died there. Those things are very dangerous. Gave us a good amount of EXP, though. Where there's one, there may be more, so just pay attention here. Gate. It's not good that we have to wade through all this water. Um, there's some more. Whoa, another jilted lover. Uh, no, I mean, young ivory. I'm gonna. Oh, it's this thing. Never mind. Right, it was a, it was a bloody ivory, right? Nope, it was, it was literally just the plan. The jilted lover on the wall. Whenever you take damage and you, ha you are safe to rest, I would highly recommend resting. Oh, there's stuff here. There is a... Hold on. I think there's a copper bar on the floor. Yeah, the wet bronze ingot. That'll trade for some good money. There is an anvil here. Can I use this? Uh, I think all of this stuff is under the water. Actually can't use it. No, I don't think so. That's cool. There's a little bronze ingot on the floor. That'll trade for some good money. I think that goes in our trade goods. Yeah. That'll be some good water for us. All this water we're wading through, by the way, is not good to drink. It's like brackish, muddy water. No good for our purposes. So I can't just scoop this up into my water skin and drink it. That would not be any good. Reload here. There's another sleep roll here. Oh, more snap draws. I'm just going to axe them to save ammunition. So I'm plenty strong enough to do that. Nylon body pack. That's really useful. This is going to give us more carry capacity if we wear it on our back. So let's have a read of this one. I am carrying bones for some reason. I don't want to be carrying bones. So I'll drop them to get some extra carry weight. So our carry weight is currently 240. What if we put on this wet nylon body pack? Let's look here. 
So we do have to replace our um, cape. This will give us 20% extra carry capacity. So we'll take the burn noose. Lose one dodge value, but we get up to 288 carry capacity now. That seems very good. Very, very good. So one thing about the walls in this game is that you can actually destroy them all. Like, they're kind of just like... I've, uh, I've had a YouTuber describe them as, like, just suggestions before. Like, you can... You can dig through the walls, you can just completely ignore the game's geometry. There is a mask there, and we just completely walked over it. This is why you got to pay attention. There is a sapwood mask right here. And this is just a very useful item to have. It's like a gas mask. It sells for a lot of money. And if there's ever, if we're ever like assailed with a gas attack, we can shove this onto our face and we will be completely safe. I think that's all of this area. Fantastic. Pretty good. Pretty good. I'm going to take a sip of my coffee now. I'm going to start making my way over to the stairs. A shortcut for making it to stairs. If you go shift and down arrow, uh, the left arrow, um, you can go to the nearest stairway up. And when I say the left arrow, I mean less than. Oh, no, that was the stairway up. Other one, the other side, greater than for staircase down. Which doesn't make sense because you think greater than implies going up. But whatever. And then just press the button again to go down. Alright, immediately there's a seed spitter. I'm just going to take fire on this one. Fantastic. Reload. We are being shot at. That was a seed, so that means there's another seed spitter down this way. There's three of them. Holy moly. I'm going to put on the force bubble. And now that we should be safe to just fire at will. There we go. Did I take that thing on the floor? No, it's just my my um, force field was covering it up. Okay. I'm going to shoot this jilted lover. There we go. How many bullets now? Um, I always like to keep tabs on how much um, ammunition I've got. Which is, sorry, my eyes are like itching like crazy. I'm going to pause the video. I'm just going to rub my eyes. Give me a moment. And we're back. I don't know if it's the hay fever or what, but my eyes have just been incredibly itchy lately. It's been very uncomfortable. We're going to go and have a look over here. I think there's another seed spell. Oh, that is a dread root. So... These things, I don't know how they do it, but they make us very scared and we'll start, like, running away in fear whenever we come near them. And the shoots throb in the upsetting staccato, so I think they just make a scary sound when we come close to them. And it makes our guy very terrified. They can be quite annoying when you're running away from things as well. Rest up, keep moving. A lot of this you can kind of just do automatically. When you're experienced with it. But it does it does pay to be careful when you're exploring the caves. Taking it slowly does reduce the chance of issues arising. So it's making sure you're always reloaded. You're always being purposeful with where you walk. Making sure you're fully healed after every fight. Stuff like this may seem unnecessary. But it will increase your chances of survival tenfold. Trust me. Uh, there's an enemy, but we couldn't see it. What What was it? We see a defanged Gershling. So this is the thing that was eating the water vine, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, here we go. We found the vermin that was eating the water vine. This is a defanged Gershling. These things are very evil. Star orchid saliva pools in the cavities where its fangs used to be and drips onto pallid leg things. It shudders in the capture of some pristine ecstasy lost to space and time. And it lets out a proud and piercing whine. It's a swarmer, but with any luck, this is the only one. So I'm just going to take some shots at it. We miss completely. We hit something, though. We just don't know what. Five critical hit on the Gershly. Four. It is injured. I don't want to attack this thing head on. I am going to step away. And I'm a little quicker, so I did get some space. I'm going to shoot again. Eleven damage. Shoot again. It's dead. We are now level five. Your Gino enters an excited state. Would you like to spend four mutation points to buy a mutation before me rapidly mutating? This is why we saved up four mutation points. We can now spend these to get a new mutation and start it rapidly developing, which means that whenever we upgrade it, it's going to upgrade more. So that's very good. We can get the freezing rate. It's interesting. Imagine a flaming, a, a, a flying gun wing with frost laser hands. That sounds cool. Psychometry. We read the history of artifacts by touching them, learning that what they do and how they were made. Unerringly identify artifacts up to complexity tier 4, so we don't have to worry about examining things anymore. Learn how to construct identified artifacts up to complexity tier 2. You may open security doors and use some secure devices by touching them. That seems very useful. 
You know, that might be the underrated, like, useful thing. It's nice to get combat stuff. We can get Stinger as well with Confusing Venom. You bear a tail with a Stinger that delivers a Confusing Venom to your enemies. So I don't really like that uh, thing to get close to us. So I don't know. Always Sting on Charge or Lunge. So we're not doing a melee build, so this is a bit interesting. Hmm. I'll tell you what, for me, it's between Freezing Ray and Psychometry. Psychometry, being able to open security doors. Now, you don't see them often, but that is very handy. And being able to uh, identify things without the risk of them breaking is very cool. Nine square ray of frost in the way, ray, uh, direction of your choice. Being able to freeze enemies is very cool. And our melee attacks cool our enemies too. But we're not doing very many melee attacks. So I think the most value we get here is psychometry. I guess this isn't really something we can upgrade. This gives us some reputation for arachnids. That's fun. I use the sting ability to strike with your stinger and automatically hit and penetrate. It's a 20% chance to sting on melee attack. The thing is, our strength stat is not very good. Nor is our... Um, nor is our ego. Uh, which is what Freezing Ray will use. I'm willing to give Freezing Ray a shot. We get to choose if we put it on our hands, our face, or our feet. Now imagine a Freezing Ray coming out of our face. We do have a beak on our face. Oh, imagine... Oh, imagine... The the frost coming out of our beak. We open our beak and a ray of frost it descends. Oh, that is awesome. I'm going to do that. You've gained the ability Freezing Ray. You've gained Freezing Ray. And now we can rapidly advance a mutation of our choice. I think it's going to be height and quickness because having that extra speed value is very good. The wings are very useful, but only when we're outside of caves. Though maybe... Maybe we could just have a super Freezing Ray. Let's do that. So we rapidly advance Freezing Ray by three ranks to rank four. You swell with inspiration to name your Chrome Revolver. God, it's really all popping off here because we killed a Gershling. We're going to name our Revolver. So let's do it. So when we name a weapon, we can do it in a number of ways. We can choose a name. We can name it based on its qualities and choose a random name from our own culture. Or we can choose a random name based on the thing we just killed to get the inspiration. Let's name it based on the Gershling. So it's named Ty... Oh, God. Typhusifus. And we get to choose a colour for our weapon now, which is really cool. Um, <coughs> let's try and get some Gershling colour going on here. Like purpley black kind of colour. I think all of these colours are like um, sort of procedurally generated too, which is fun. Typhusifus. Wanton. Rainbow random. Uh, gosh, there's so many options. Let's just do Dark Magenta because we killed the Gershling with it. Typhusifus. We name our Chrome Revolver Typhusifus. Awesome. Let's go over to the Gershling. We need to collect its corpse. Yes, so we get the corpse and now we have to carry it back. That does weigh a lot. It weighs 20 pounds. So make sure not to butcher or eat that. And we'll be able to show that to the um, to the guys, the farmers, and say, look, it was a Gershling. Um, we'll learn more about the Gershlings later, but they are like, they're very bad, very evil things. Um, uh, Elder Era Dad will tell us more about them. Uh, Beetlebum, he's neutral to us, so I'm not going to advance to him. Dirut salt water, brackish water, brackish water. We're just going to auto-explore now because the Gershling is out of the way. I'm going to kill this thing. It's, they are very annoying. I don't want them around. So I might want to turn this corner. Okay. And another Jewel of Lover. Just swing. Oh, we should give our Frost Ray a shot, shouldn't we? So let's have a read of our Frost Ray ability. Because we did rapidly advance it to rank 4. Um, you emit a Frost Ray from your face. This rank emits a 9... So it increases the damage dealt by a D3 worth, which is fun. And it also... Increases the cool on our melee attacks. Also, sorry if I'm sniffling. I'm really trying my best not to. Um, just been having some nasal issues lately. I've been having everything issues. I think it is the uh, hay fever season. Yeah. Uh, there's no point doing... Maybe there's a point in doing the frost ray right now. Oh, that's butcher corpses. So don't want to do that. That's, uh, it's a bad shot is all. So let's just kill these things. Let's try and find a real enemy. <clears throat> See if we can freeze them. There is a seed spitter. Maybe this is the one. Oh, another Gershling. Okay, we're going to let that come to us. 
I'm gonna freeze it. Freeze ray. You emit a freezing ray from your face. The frozen wet deep end gershling is stuck in a frozen pool of brackish water. Isn't that awesome? Uh, he's got unstuck. Um, but he's cold, I think. Um, let's melee him. We hit him. We hit him. We hit him. How close to dying is he? Very close. He's dead. I'm going to... Don't need to pick up this corpse. I'm going to rest now. Oh. There we go. And we have freezing ray back. So if I find this thing, I can fire my freezing ray at it. And it dies. Wow, it's very nice having this as an alternative to my pistols. Very fun choice. Just a, it, just a gun wing with frost rays emitting from its face is very cool to me. I don't know. Something about that is... It makes my neurons fire. Kill this dreadroot. Very, very annoying thing. Um, is this deep? No, it's not deep. Okay. I think once it hits 1,000 drams, then it starts becoming like waist height, and you need to start wading through it. What is this? That's a copper nugget. That is money. I'm gonna take that copper nugget. Oh, it's deep though. I have to. I had to take a swim for that. Also, ouchy. Rest up. I think freezing ray can also make paths over water. Yeah, look, so it froze the water. So I can actually walk on this now. It didn't last for very long, though. That's a huge boulder. Oh my god. <clears throat> I think large boulders can be used as cover. Also does a lot of damage, but we need to be able to wield it. It, it weighs 500 pounds. Y you can actually use boulders as weapons. I think they're thrown weapons. But I find it amusing that you can wield them. Oh, I just stepped on a young ivory again. Ouchie. I need to rest. There we go. Let's continue exploring. I hate young ivories. I think they're so annoying. The thing is, when you're auto-exploring, it doesn't stop you stepping on them either. Like, you'll just step on them over and over and over again unless you get rid of them. Okay, there is a jilted lover here. Kill it. Kill the dread root. Kill the jilted lover. Rest a bit. Uh, I'm not going to shoot this thing. I'm just going to... These plants are so easy to kill, you might as well just kill them with your, you know, hands. Okay. I'm going to find my freezing ray now. It's dead. I could wait for my freezing ray to come off cooldown. It actually has a pretty low cooldown, which is really nice. Yeah, only two big rests, and it is uh, off cooldown. It's very good. So, we got to the bottom of what was eating the water vine. I am going to continue exploring Red Rock because nearer the bottom we'll start getting some decent loot. And I've still got quite a bit of uh, space in my backpack, so I'm going to try and get as much value as I can out of Red Rock here. Oh, don't forget to rest. Don't forget to rest. So it's now the High Salt Sun, second of Ut Ura Ux. Oh, another Gershling. Freeze it. Hey, we froze him solid. And let's, uh, let's shoot at him. Now he's frozen. Free. Do it again. I think frozen enemies get an armor bonus. There we go. And there's another Gershling corpse here. We only need the one. So all of these um, Gershlings are defanged. So whoever brought them into the world kind of was a little bit sadistic and actually took the fangs off of them. Whether or not that was to keep themselves safe. Is there any way down? Nope. Okay. That is the that is Red Rock. So let's go back to the top. It was only four strata deep. I stepped on another one. Die. I hate these things. I am bleeding. Um, we're not bleeding anymore. Oh no, we are. We're bleeding. Okay, it stopped. I was really not hope. I didn't want to die to bleeding there. That'd have been quite annoying. But yeah, whoever brought these Gershlings um, in, removed their fangs so they wouldn't cause too much trouble. You are famished. I need to eat. So let's make a campfire. Let's whip up a meal. I don't care what I eat really. Oh, I can preserve my exotic foods. So that's my salve. I'm not going to do that. You should never preserve your injectors. They're very useful. I don't have any ingredients to cook with, so we're just going to whip up a meal with what we can find. You eat the meal, so nothing special. But we do not starve, which is great. Let's go to the stairway up here. I hope you're all enjoying Caves of Code. I think this game is delightful. I think it continues to surprise. Like... No matter how long I play this game, I'm always discovering new stuff, seeing things I've never seen before. It is a great time. If you like an RPG, if you want an RPG where you can just explore a vast world, I really think Case of Cud is one of the best ones out there. Hmm. 
we have made it out of red rock back to the surface and because we have wings um actually do we have uh we have 162 skill points no mutation points left no attribute points so i can't scale anything yet i think i'll be scaling my strength next because i'm quite happy with my agility i will be upgrading my wings at some point so i can uh, fly faster on the world map i can get weak spotter so i'm going to do that having that extra five percent crit chance with our pistol seems very good um what do what does the uh what does the Freezing Ray scale off of the physical mutation? I know that, but let's have a read here. I'm going to just take a sniffle here, I'm sorry. Okay, we're back. Sorry about that. Um, It doesn't say that it scales off of any stat, but I'm going to have to assume it's my ego. I don't think it's a mental one, actually. Maybe we want to increase our willpower. Because this will affect our regenerate and our cooldowns. But I think strength is very good. Like, this will increase our melee damage, increase our armor penetration, increase our uh, resistance to force movement, and increase our carry capacity. I want to get this to, like, 18, and then I'm going to start scaling up maybe toughness and agility. I want to get Ego to 18 too, but that's less of a major priority to me. Uh, whilst we are not in Jopa, I'm going to go and talk to our friend, the um, oddly hued... Uh, Glowpad. He's got a special shop I want to talk to. Uh, who is he liked and disliked by? I've already had the Water Witch rule with this guy, right? So let's trade. Okay. So we'll sell this armor because there's no use in having it, really. I'll keep the mask. I'll, I'll sell the burn loose because I've got the backpack now. Don't know what this trinket is. We could sell the books, but I'm going to keep them for uh, the library. A lover's blossom. I've never had this before. I'm going to have to look at it. Um, anything else? I'm selling these weapons. I don't want to sell that. I will keep the scrap for now, even though I'm not majorly fussed. And we'll keep the trade goods, because they are more efficient to carry than carrying lots of water. And let's see what we can get here. Getting some food seems like a good idea. I don't need to get star apples, because I'll get the ability to just get those anyway at some point. Woolly elastine gloves give us two to our dodge value... Heat resistance, cold resistance, and agility. Like, these increase my agility, so it's going to make my accuracy better. I want to get these, but I feel like they're going to be way too expensive. Um, though, I do have that bronze ingot. I really got a sneeze hold. And we are back. It is just relentless with the hay fever lately. I think, yeah, if we offer this bronze ingot, we got 100 money. We can get the woolly elastine gloves, which is great. Which means we could probably sell our other gloves, too. It means we probably don't need to sell these things yet. We're getting some extra water wouldn't be good. We're 15 drams over right now. So I'll get this jerky. Having a glow sphere would be good, but these things are really expensive. Don't need the dagger. Don't need microchips. I can top up the rest with copper nuggets. I don't need seven of them, though. Maybe, maybe not seven. Maybe one. And then he'll have to pony up two drams. So I'm happy with that. Fantastic. So we get the gloves. Let's wear those because they will give us an agility bonus. Very, very good. So before we wear these, we are at 22. If we wear these, it'll be better for our build here. We're up to 23. Fantastic. And this is our accuracy. And it also allows us to um, go up to disarming shot on here, which is very good. We don't need to keep, right? Here's the interesting part about the skills here. Once we learn... For 23 agility, we don't need to keep 23 agility. We can go below 23 then and we'll still have that ability. So it's very good. Disarming shot is very cool, by the way. We have an agility-based chance to disarm your opponent when a score hit with a pistol. Very strong, especially when our agility is so high. We have these ball skin gloves. I don't have multiple sets of hands, so I can't wear them. But I guess I'll sell it. One and a half drums. I think what we'll do is we'll save it until we get to Jopa and then we'll go and talk with Tam. Let's go back to Jopa. Alrighty. Um, though I can talk to the farmer and explain to him what has been eating the water vine. Um, let's, let's get in close and talk to him. Live and drink, Tyvar. Any news from Red Rock? Yes, I found the vermin and bits of Nord water vine. I carry one's corpse with me. Oh, oh. Don't like the look of that thing. Bring it to the Elder. Puts up the Mothwise up the path. Okay. So I have to go and talk to Elder Irudad here. He's going to hopefully tell us a little bit about what this thing is. Hmm, friend, okay. 
I'm back from Red Rock with the corpse of a pale spideling elder. Would you examine it? This? Oh. Oh. Elder Iridad pauses for several minutes. What I'd like? Hmm. Foul smell of sour gum. Moon and sun. A gershling? This is a gershling. What's a gershling? Creature of plague, my friend. Hmm, this one. This one's covered in a slick and muscled out of... Uh, this one's covered in slick and muscled out the bilge hose of sleeping Algogot. Oh my god. In in the cave under the cloaca. Hmm, but here, Gershling this far west, there must be hundreds for one to reach. Hmm, just the Gaia widened again. Gaia? Hmm. Plagues of our great grandsires many times over. Salt, darkness, Svadrim frog. Frog, Gershling. Interesting. So... The it's like it kind of like the seven plagues of Egypt. It's like there was a, a number of plagues in Cud's history, and the Gershlings were one of these plagues sent upon the world by some very unhappy people. Hmm, friend, do not like the sour air with a harsh word. Uh, do not like to sour the air with a harsh word. But this tiding bites my liver like acid. Hmm, must ask Nima for an elixir of yuckwheat. Uh, I noticed that the creature had its fangs removed. Hmm. Oh, a guy white it must be. They bind the teeth right up to their own gums to make a show for their g Gersh Nephilim. So they've taken the teeth out of this thing and they've put them into their own mouth, which is crazy. Gersh Nephilim? Mmm, Nephilim. Seventh plague. Gersh Titans born of the moon stare and quickened to life to eat our young. Sultan Rasha br um, drove them back a, chilled, a, a, a chilly ad ago, away to slumber. Mmm, do they rouse? I'm sorry to cause pain, Elder. Mmm, no friend. Your finding is rich in value to us. We are poor farmers and sharpen our vine reap uh, and sharpen our vine reapers is all we can do, but others, perhaps more. Take these prickly boons as thanks. I will not soon forget this, Tybar. Leave me now to muse, kindly. So we have uncovered that perhaps um the plague may be returning to Kud, which is a bit scary. Uh we received an Uber Nostrum injector, a weird artifact, a salve injector, a salve injector, and a salve injector. So they're all healing items. And then we finish the quest what's eating the water vine. Jopa loves us. Very good. Right. Let's go and see what an uber nostrum is. I'm pretty sure these come from the uber berries we saw earlier, which are a really good healing item. So this should heal us. So, yeah, we recover 0.6 points per level. At the end of the 10th round, you'll purge of all short-term debuffs. Okay, so it's like a salve injector, but a little better, I think. I think it does the same thing, but also has a cleansing debuff thing. Yeah, there you go. So it's literally just a better version of the salve injector. We did get a couple artifacts too, so let's examine these. If we got the psychometry, we wouldn't have to do this, but we do not have psychometry. Wait, is this the one that we're... Yeah, this is the one we're offering to the well, so I'm not going to bother examining this. Because uh, I don't want to break it. Let's examine the one we got from the Elder here. This is the Fix-It Spray Foam. Fantastic. So we can spray this onto broken armor to fix it. That's very good. Uh, let's go and talk then before we enter today's episode to Tan. So I'm going to click over here, walk to Tan. Hello, Tan. Uh, let's trade. Uh, so you've not topped up your stock of um, not topped up your stock of lead slugs, which is a bit annoying. Let's look at the painter cloth shawl. I think I've already looked at this. Oh no, we have not looked at this yet. Um, so I'm wondering whether the electrician city state of Tarkar, Giladuct the Second, discovered Tenana. There, she befriended oozers and assembled a new contraption. So, hold on, what was our quest there? Visit Tarkar. Okay, that was our quest. Just visit Tarkar. Have a desire to go to this place we've read about. Psychic gland. A cycle gland paste. Adds a secret based effect to cooked meals. That's very interesting. You get a glow sphere. Too expensive, though. Musket, don't need. I'll tell you what we should do. We should go and give our guy a knick knack. That sounds like a good idea. There's a muddy tube. Hats? Do I have a hat yet? I do not. Oh, I do have a hat, so that's fine. Let's go and talk to Argive and give him his knickknack that he wanted. Hey there. I have a knickknack. I'm not going to give him the. In fact, yeah, sure. Mm. I don't have. I don't have a spare knickknack to give him. I don't want to give him the thing that I said I was going to offer to the well. Um. So let's go and buy one from Tam here. I could also steal one from the chests, but I'm not going to do that because it could ruin the entire run. Let's just grab this 50 cost one. And I'll pitch up a book for it. And a couple swords and 
some scrap and a beaded bracelet. Which means I probably don't have to offer up a book. Yeah, and I'll, I'll pony up the rest of the water. There we go. So we get that artifact. Let's go and examine it. It's a poison gas grenade, so that's perfect. I don't care about that. Let's go and give that to our guy. I don't mind swapping some stuff around. I'm probably going to need to get some more fresh water at some point. Here's your knickknack. Have a poison gas grenade, my friend. So we get 75 EXP for that. We level up. Up to level 6, we get mutation point And then 1 to each attribute. Completed the quest. Fetch Argab knickknack. Ah, um, you are useful one after all. Go fetch me another. <laughs> okay, he wants another knickknack. We'll go and source another knickknack afterwards. But I think that's going to do for today. Let's have a look at our level ups quickly. So we do get 1 to each attribute, which is great. We got a mutation point. So let's increase our wings ability. So this will increase the world map by another 0.5 times. Reduce chance of becoming lost. Less chance to fall clumsily. Extra movement speed while sprinting. Uh, yeah. I'm just going to do this because this seems very useful. And then we'll upgrade height and quickness, I think, next. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Um, Salming shot I definitely want. Let's go and pick this up. And I think that's going to do. Thank you, everybody, for watching. In the next episode, we're going to go get Argive his next knickknack and do whatever other quests he wants us to do. And then maybe Argive will send us off on our next step of the quest. Maybe we'll go and visit the six days still and drop off the artifact that the... Um, the farmer wants us to drop off. Um, or was it a farmer? Or was it a mechanimist convert? I think it was a mechanimist convert farmer. But yeah, we will go to the six day still. If not in the next episode, in the one after that. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching guys. Uh, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye.